In this video, we'll look at adding the daylight system into the scene, as well as adjusting the photographic exposure control. To create daylight, go to the Command Panel in the Creation tab, and over to Systems, and there's daylight. When Max suggests adding the Mental Ray photographic exposure control in, do so. You'll need this as part of your rendering. For daylight, click and drag anywhere in the scene, and drag out to release the daylight and get the height. Daylight comes with three big things. One is a compass. We can set the north arrow so we get the lighting and the time of day correct for a place. The second is the sun. It's actually called the physical sun, or the mental ray sun, and a skylight controlled by the mental ray sky. Really, the sky is the control for everything. What we want to do first with daylight is go into the setup, which takes us to the motion panel which takes us to the motion panel. In here, under the setup, I'll adjust the time and date. This daylight is geared for San Rafael, California at 12 noon, June 21st. Sun directly overhead at Autodesk's headquarters. The first thing I do is to change it. I like to crank it over to fall and go for afternoon or maybe morning. Nice long low daylight will stream in. And what I'm looking at here, and the realistic viewport is very helpful, is that I want the daylight to stream across the space diagonally, getting the maximum mileage out of the geometry in the window frames. Here's my test. In a top view, the daylight is going diagonally across the scene, not at a 45 degree angle. In a left or front view, we see the same. It's coming down, not at a 45. If you want to get a particular location, you can click on the Get Location and either enter a latitude and longitude or select from a map. If you'd like to increase the orbital scale to pull the daylight out, you can. This only really factors in when we're dealing in excessively large models. I'll go into one of my cameras, Camera 1, and do a quick render and see what this looks like. I'll scroll over so I'm on the inside here. Here's the other things daylight does. It turned on final gather and if it's not on I'll make sure it is. With this we've enabled the bounce of light in the scene. When we hit render then we'll see that daylight illuminates most of the room here. When we hit render we'll see that daylight illuminates the room fairly nicely. Now, this does need materials in the scene. For the light to really bounce correctly, we need mental ray materials so that the reflectance and transmittance is accurate. However, we can see the daylight is working pretty well. Here's some things I do to really make the daylight pop out. I'll press 8 and go to the photographic exposure control. Here's the physical sky, and I'll make sure it's showing up, checking use map if it's not. It should be checked by default, but it's always worth a look. In the render, that's going to give us the physical sky in the background. This physical sky is actually the control for all of the daylight. I'll go down to the exposure control, where I've added the mental ray photographic exposure. We have a couple ways to work this. One is with an exposure value, where that ties into different settings in shutter, aperture, and ISO. Photographic exposure gives you the ability to have film style camera controls dealing in shutter speed how long is the shutter open in fractions of a second to let light in the lens. Aperture, how big or how many stops are you? The larger the stop, the smaller the opening. And film speed, and even digital cameras have this. A higher film speed means a greater sensitivity to light, but you can blow out the image easier. Because we're on an interior but with daylight, I'm going to run 200 speed film. I'm going to try this at a more open aperture. Here's an f 2.8. Then I'll try slowing down the shutter speed and seeing how it looks. I'll try a 256th of a second and see if this gets me pretty decent renderings. It's very bright, almost too bright. What this tells me is I really need to take that aperture back up. That, that was just too open. I'll try a 5.6 and see if that works. Good. I'm getting good lighting value in here. 
The ceiling is not overly dark, I'm getting good shadow, and I'm reading the outside as if it's in good strong light. The other parts in the image control are some darkroom techniques, burning the highs and crushing the blacks or boosting the shadows, pushing the luminance values apart. This is really crucial when we're doing lighting. The first thing I do when I'm setting up a scene is get the photographic exposure control on, whether it's interior lights or daylight. I want to have the ability to have range between highs and shadows, because this comes into play in color correction in compositing. One last note. Sometimes I'll light my scenes, taking color saturation in the photographic exposure, down to zero. And when I render, I'll look at the value first. Rather than clutter my mind in the view with color, I'll look at the range in the lighting, from the brights to the darks, and say, is this the mood I'm after? Then I'll come back and look at the color of the image. With the daylight set up and the photographic exposure, we can light up scenes quickly and easily. There's other things we can always adjust in lighting and materials and so forth. I don't want to get too deep in this until I get materials on the scene. One last bonus item to leave you with. Shadow softness. In the daylight system, the softness on the sun is variable. A higher softness number means those shadows get fuzzier, so if it shouldn't look so harsh, we can play with that. Softness samples is the quality. As I boost that up, we get softer and nicer looking shadows. Beware this is at the expense of rendering time. Again, this is an artistic choice. How should it look in that scene? With that, let the sun in. Let it stream through your renderings and show off the geometry and the animation you've made.